You know, as I was laying down there, <coughs> unconscious among all the dust bunnies and Zagnut wrappers, I dreamed. I dreamed that I was on Mars. And while I was on Mars, I saw. I saw. Rocks. Just so many rocks. Rocks and sand. Which is just a bunch of smaller rocks. Yeah, kind of a boring dream, but it does make me wonder, what the hell was John Carter on? Yes, John Carter, best known today as the star of one of Disney's most notorious live-action flops. Funny how often I end up liking those more than the successes. Yeah, not so much that one. Honestly, I think the failure of Disney's John Carter movie at the box office had as much to do with the title as anything else. Not John Carter, Warlord of Mars, or John Carter and the Princess of Mars, no. Just John Carter. Could you get any more waspy and bland? Kinda like calling it Phil Smith. RULER OF YOUR ANUS! <laughs> However, despite his lack of name recognition with modern audiences, few characters have had more influence in the sci-fi genre. In addition to preceding both Buck Rogers and Flash Gordon, John Carter's influence can also be found in much later works, like DC Comics' Adam Strange, Marvel's Star-Lord, or even James Cameron's Avatar. I mean, just about any story that has an ordinary Earthman somehow finding himself transported into a weird sci-fi setting owes something to John Carter. Good thing it's public domain. Though written under the pseudonym of Norman Bean, John Carter was actually the first literary creation of Edgar Rice Burroughs, making his debut in the February 1912 issue of All Story in a novella entitled Under the Moons of Mars. A few months later, a serialized version of Tarzan of the Apes would appear in the same magazine. Following the breakout popularity of Tarzan, the first John Carter story was collected into a single volume under the title A Princess of Mars. While at first glance, John Carter would appear to be the, um, seminal. Oh, grow up. Okay, how about we just say the earliest example of a guy who gets transported into a wildly futuristic setting. And while this is true, John Carter's origins are steeped in mystery long before he finds himself transported to Mars. See, John Carter has no memory of childhood and appears to be immortal. Much like Connor McCloud of the Highlander films, he's watched generations of friends and family grow old and die while he himself retains the appearance of a man of 30. 
When he does finally appear to die after being attacked by a group of Apaches, he wakes up on Mars in a duplicate of his earthly body. Now, understand that Burroughs Mars, which he also calls Barsoom, is quite different from the actual planet as we understand it today. First off, not as many rocks. Besides that, Burroughs Mars is also filled with strange and amazing creatures, like Tharks, Plant Men, and the titular... I said grow up. Princess of Mars herself, Deha Thoris. While certainly quaint by today's standards, John Carter's first outing would go on to set the template for all the planetary adventure stories that continue to this day. And if we're being honest, A Princess of Mars still holds up as a fun read today in contrast to the first Buck Rogers novel, which is kind of a chore to get through. And though not as popular as Tarzan, John Carter would go on to appear in 10 more novels over the course of the next 30 years. And as I mentioned earlier, the first seven books have fallen into the public domain and are freely available online in ebook form. I recently picked up this nice hardcover of books one through five at Barnes & Noble for just a few bucks. But despite the massive impact the character has had, he's been oddly unaddressed in other forms of media. There have been a few comics, and Looney Tunes animator Bob Clampett worked with Burroughs' son to create this test animation for a series of cartoons that ultimately never got made. But apart from that, there really hasn't been much else. However, the 2012 Disney movie is in fact not the first film adaptation. In 2009, Mottbuster Studio The Asylum released their own direct-to-video adaptation of A Princess of Mars, starring Antonio Sabato Jr. and former adult film star Tracy Lords. Princess of Mars? More like... You know, with all that reduced gravity, I bet she could really... Titular. <laughs> okay, I'll stop. But, cheap jokes aside, there's hardly any reason to check this out with the 2012 movie out there. As a fan of the books, I was quite happy with it, and was only disappointed that it didn't do well enough for them to make more. But ultimately, it's always about the source material, and the books are easy to track down online and make for a pretty fun read. Check them out if you haven't already. Well, I hope you enjoyed our look back at John Carter. For our next episode, we might as well finish out the big three of sci-fi's early heroes by delving into the history of Flash Gordon. After all, it's not like I have a choice, do I? No. So I'll see you in the future. Stupid.